You're live. Go for it. Okay, great. So welcome everyone uh, to tonight's session, which is Lynn's kayak packing tips. It's nice <laughs> to see you all here. Um, most of you know Lynn pretty well, but for those who don't, Lynn is a happy camper who loves the challenge of efficiently packing up her kayak. She doesn't like to suffer, so she brings her comforts with her, but she still considers herself a minimalist. She's done more than a few multi-week trips, but is constantly tweaking her kit, otherwise known as a gear junkie. And she says she used to buy shoes and purses, but now a lightweight chair makes her smile. So um, our format for tonight, the, the video is only about 16 minutes long altogether. There will be a couple of short pauses where you'll see a gear list on your screen. If you wanna ask questions when you see those, the, the list come up on the screen, there's one at about five minutes in and another one at about 10 minutes in. You can ask away or you can type things into the chat and I will read them when we get to one of those breaks or at the end. And so with that, I will say, uh, roll the film, Edmund, please. Hi, I'm Lynn. And I'm hopefully going to give you some tips on how to pack your boat for a trip. There is no wrong way to do it, but I think I found a few little tricks and tips that might make it a wee bit easier for you. Uh, for starters, if you're packing from the car and you have a ramp to load to uh, launch from, then setting it up and packing it on wheels and wheeling the whole works down works well for me. If you're on the beach and you have a falling tide, you wanna poke the nose in just a little bit and that way you pack your front hatch and slide it in as the tide retreats, you can move it in so there's no heavy lifting in the end. Okay, I, am, I packed my gear in Ikea bags here. Uh, one for the front hatch, one for the back hatch and then the stuff that goes in the cockpit or on deck. So this is my front hatch bag. Uh, a lot of people like to do diagrams. Uh, my approach is usually that I, if it has to go in the boat, it has to go in the boat. <laughs> so I don't make too many lists or diagrams and just work my way through it. I try and pack my bags up in reverse order because I kind of know what goes in first, what goes in last. You see I'm on one of these little kneeling pads, which I kind of like as a, a bum pad when you stop for lunch too. Uh, some people like to put use tarps, put their stuff out on tarps. To me that's just one more sandy covered thing to deal with. As I'm packing my bags, I write what I'm putting down in the bag on a list and leave it in here. That way I don't fret, did I pack it, didn't I pack it? So it's all written down. Now I know the first thing that's going to go in there is going to be my bow bag, which is full of my clothes. I take two bags, two tapered bags. Uh, I put weeks, say we're going for two weeks, Week one clothes go in the front, week two clothes go in the back. And that way, if we're doing day trips and all my clothes are back at, at camp, then I know I've always got a spare set of clothes if the horrible capsize happens. So these are great. They just go, you know, scoot them down the end and uh, they fit snugly in there. I use a lot of compression bags. Some people don't like them. They think they're too hard and not maneuverable enough. I like them. I like them making things smaller and I just find it easier to pack. From this point, I sort of feel the space that I have and look for smaller bags to fit in those spaces. It usually takes a couple of runs at it. And my tent, again, I like the compression bag. 
system. Remember not to put anything uh, that can be magnetized in your front hatch as it'll uh, upset your compass. At the top, I like to leave things like my toiletry bags and my tarp. Sometimes you get there, it's wet. And it's always handy to get that tarp up. And that is basically the front hatch done. What about the bags themselves? Yeah, yeah. I could. Thanks, Morley. Yeah, pack up your bag at the end, and everything will go back in after. Also, most of the stuff in my front hatch is going up to where I'm pitching my tent. So it'll all be in one bag. There we go. Don't close up your hatches because you will nearly always forget something. So this is Lynn's list for the front hatch of her boat. Do we have any questions? You can unmute yourself if you want to ask a question or you can type something into chat or we'll wait a few seconds. And if we don't have any, we'll just carry on. Uh, Lynn, as yours, a two man tent, three man tent, four man tent, and also uh, is any of the gear you've just put in there do you use it for backpacking as well as kayaking? So it's lighter weight, smaller or whatever. I usually uh, take my two man tent. Um, it's roomy for one, but Morley and I both like it just for, for the two of us too. You can, there's extra space in the vegetable, but the tent that I packed for the video is actually a four man tent because I was going to take my grandson's uh, camping. Didn't happen, but ready to go. And we had a couple of questions. BJ's wondering if they can have um, copies of your lists, which will be available. Um, I'll have to check in with Edmund and Tony how that's going to work, but I'm pretty sure they're going to be available from the Cisco website or from YouTube where the video is going to end up, but we'll find that out. Sure, you could probably take a screenshot right now, too. Okay. I just oh. took a photo with my camera. <laughs> oh, hello there. And uh, Sean is wondering where you got your tapered bags and are the compression bags dry compression bags? They are dry compression bags. And I think I got the taper bags. I think I got them at Mac. They're a sea to summit and you can get them a couple of places. Um, Sport Check Atmosphere has their uh, friends and family event on right now. So if you can find them on Atmosphere site, you might as well save a buck or two. Okay, and uh, Rosalind's wondering where you got the blue tote bag. I'm gonna guess that it's Ikea. It's Ikea. Who came back from, I think Eve did an Ikea run and uh, brought back a bunch of the zippered bags, but yeah, they're Ikea bags. Okay. Ubiquitous Ikea bags. And Edmund's wondering if you only get to pack when it's raining outside. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much raining or dark. <laughs> okay, I think we can carry on, Edmund. Okay, now the back hatch. I start off with my two bear barrels. I know that I can put enough food in two bear barrels to last me for three weeks. Bear barrels are very handy 
but they're also really pricey for a giant plastic container. And Ikea bag number two. The other taper bag. Ah, you know, I messed up a little there because that's what I do. At the very, very end, I put a spare tarp so that if we get caught on a day trip where we need to uh, shelter, it's nice to have that tarp. And it has a string on the end of it so that it doesn't get buried in the tip. Uh, Tarp pulls go in the bottom there. Fuel. Boots, which is just about all I wear in camp. Great for washing dishes. And my kitchen bag. Okay, Edmund, we're seeing a big uh, uh, spot in the front hatch. Square. One of those bags has rain gear in it too, which is handy to have close to put on when you get there. This is my repair kit. Um, I have all kinds of different things in here of nuts and bolts and uh, lots of Gorilla Tape, uh, spare gaskets, neck gaskets, wrist gaskets, uh, yeah, tent repair, boat repair, uh, dry suit repair, all in there. And that generally hangs out in the boat so that if I get caught, as I was last year, with a broken rudder cable in big water, I can fix it when I get to a beach. Uh, water filtration um, either will go in a hatch or stay in the cockpit if I think I'm going to need water soon. And tent water bottle. And this is what I call my last minute bag. Um, you're always going to forget something. If I was on the beach and I was wearing, this jacket would go back in my car, but if I was uh, trying to keep warm till the end when I'm packing up, then it could go in the last minute bag and I wouldn't need to worry about it going in the perfect bag in the hatches. Uh, this is a new gizmo that I got. It's a kitchen sink tray carrier. I'm not sure if it's going to be worth the bulk or not. I'm going to give it a shot this year. And you can see that I still have lots of room in here. And again, the Ikea bag meter that I'm doing for this. And there we go with the back hatch. Again, don't put the hatch cover on until you're sure that everything is in there. Alrighty, what have we got here? Uh... Oh, Alan is uh, complimenting Morley on the videography, which I agree. He did yeah. a great job. And I love how he shows how much space there is still in the boat. I didn't know there was space. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Edmund is going to try to post the lists to the chat window at the end of the video if somebody hasn't taken a screenshot of them. Okay. Uh, and oh, Sean's wondering about water, which I know we're going to get to. And Mike Miles is wondering what kind of a kayak you're packing there. It's a Telco Sport, and yes, they're bigger, but I also once packed a Greenland boat for five days. So I can do it no matter what size boat I have. 
Okay. And where did you get the bear barrels? Bear barrels, I believe I got, I think I got my Black Garcia machine, they're called. Uh, ooh, online and the bigger clear uh, bear barrel, I think, Mac. I think they're like a hundred and a quarter now, though. They're crazy expensive. If you can borrow one, do that. But they're available a few places. Okay. And do you know how what their dimensions are or how could somebody, I guess you need to find somebody who has some and try them in your boat to see if they're going to fit. That's what I would do. Absolutely. That's what I would do because I mean, Jenny and I, when we both paddled the uh, GTS, uh, Current Designs uh, GTS, uh, they fit in my boat and not hers. They were exact same model and similar. Year. So who knows? Okay. Uh, than... go, sorry, go ahead, Lynn. I just said it's better to check first. Yeah. Um, Raul and Louise are wondering what's in your kitchen bag. I don't know. If... <laughs> you want to go it, through that? Um, it's in the foods uh, when we did the, uh, the food. Um, clinic. Okay. Have everything listed in there. I can do that for you though. Um, yeah, I'll do that. If I get, get the email address, I'm happy to, to print out what's in my kitchen bag and, and send it along or send you a picture. Okay. Uh, and Jenny's wondering about kitchen supplies and pots and eating plate and bowl. I think that those things have gone into your boat, but maybe we didn't hear when they did. Well, my jet boil, if I'm just camping by myself, so if I'm camping with Morley or, or somebody else and we're doing shared equipment, then I also have extra boats to uh, share the workload with, the pack load with. So if it's just me, I'll have my jet boil and that's it. And my bowls and whatnot are in my kitchen bag. I have little compact squishy bowls that go in my kitchen bag, but uh, yeah, the jet boil is really handy. Okay, great. Okay, I think we can carry on here. Oh, I could see that. Oh, oh we got a couple more. Um, ba -da -ba -dum -ba -dum. Ah, BJ's wondering what kind of fuel. I use the little canisters. I can, uh, the isobutane canisters. Um, White gas is the most uh, effective, efficient way to do it. It's the cheapest, um, but they're loud. White gas stoves are loud. They're the only thing you should be using in winter too. But the isobutane canisters are just so quick and easy that that's what I choose. And how long does a canister last you, Lynn? I, you, I figure one a week for me, and then I take an extra one just to be on the safe side. Um, and Sean is telling us that he bought a bear vault from Cabela's last year for bear oh. barrel. Cool. Okay. Okay. Now I think we can carry on. On to the cockpit. This is a nice waterproof bag I have. A tote is wonderful also. So this works for me. Here's my PFD. You can see I'm wearing my dry suit and I usually have that on before I start packing. The shoes that I'm wearing are uh, amphibious so I can wear them on the water. They'll also be great for around camp, going for a walk, etc. Now here's my PFD. I have my radio, my rescue knife, tow package, I have an emergency light, I have my laser flare, I have a compass, uh, I have another uh, strobe light, and my whistle. I say my radio yep. and this this is something new that I'm trying this year too there's a uh, definite wisdom in thinking that if you are separated from your boat all you have is what you're wearing 
So if I was going to be out in challenging seas and be concerned about being separated from my boat for whatever horrible reason, this is my bailout package. So I have some first aid in there. I have uh, an emergency poncho, just stuff that will keep me alive. I forgot to mention I have a first aid kit also in my repair kit in the back hatch. I have my spray skirt. I have my camera slash uh, phone case. I have water on board. Paddle float. Emergency electronic stuff. A helmet, which I will either be wearing or have it very close by. My GPS. Another radio. This radio uh, is a battery pig, but it has the distress button so that if I get in trouble, I can uh, pull the distress button and they will locate me. Uh, long uh, throw rope. My charts. And a puppy. So I try and get, it's not always obvious, but I like to have possible, but you do need a lot of things close at hand. So this bag will stay in the cart, along with the jacket, and then I will suit up, and I'm good to go. Oh, water! Thank you, Morley. Water goes in last because it's heavy. So when you're on the water, put your water in the uh, in the boat. Uh, I some people like to keep water in their hatches. I do not because I've had it leak before, and I just as soon keep my hatches dry. But you can fit one nicely behind your seat. Usually, I have a 10 liter. Look how strong I am. That's actually full of air. I have a 10 liter that I like to keep underneath my knees. And also, I put one at the front, too. My back hatch is usually heavier than my front hatch, so to keep my trim right, I put water at my feet to balance the boat a little better. When you're on the water, you can ask your buddies how your trim looks, if you're good to go. And, yes, that's about that. Now here we go, here's the finished product. Don't forget to unclip your rudder. And everything is attached. I always do a lot of beaners. Make sure everything's attached. If there's a way to lose it, I can do that. So I have lots of little extras here and there. Here's an extra bungee. If uh, you need to strap anything on deck for whatever reason, I usually have a couple of them. Electronics in the Pelican case, tethered in there, pump tethered in there, paddle float tethered in there, my sponge, water behind, water under my knees, water up front, charts, GPS, camera case, throw bag, spare paddle. Everything's attached. I can't lose it. I might look like a floppy mess if I go over, but it's all there. And yes, that's it. I'm wearing a hat. Uh, sunglasses are there, so I can't lose them. Definitely don't need them today. And I'm good to go. Let's see. Let's go to God's pocket. <laughs> In Lynn's backyard. All right, I did see some more questions come in here. Uh, okay, so uh, Sean says, oops, not bear vault. It was out of stock. It was a counter assault bear keg food container <laughs> that he got at Cabela's. 
Um, and he also says he loves the idea of a bailout kit with the 10 essentials. Is the bailout as well as your tow line? If so, do they bunch up behind? It's the bailout as well as your tow line. No, that's just my bailout bag there. Um, I have uh, a tow, tow package on my PFD, should, should have mentioned that. Um, I have never capsized in, in big water with all my gear, so I can't tell you exactly how it would look. Hopefully fine. <laughs> but um, yeah, did I answer that question then? Uh, yeah, he was just wondering if they bunch up together, but they're not, one's on the front and one's on the back, so. I'm always messing around with the best place to have the, the bailout bag. So I'll let you know after my first trip whether or not it's going to be terribly uncomfortable there or not. I've positioned it so that hopefully it will sort of sit on the back, be with me, but not uh, feel like a heavy weight on my PFD. Okay. Um, and you, since you've never capsized, you can't answer the question of whether the water bags stay in if you capsize. <laughs> um, no, I can't. Uh, hopefully, well, I tether them too. They, I, everything has a beaner and is tethered in there. I, I get a little bit um, sketched about that because I kind of wonder if there's too much stuff in the cockpit. Is it going to make me feel vulnerable if I go over? Am I going to be kicking around? Um, Morley and I both know that they float. The, the water bags float. We know this because two of them floated off on our second day of a three week trip up in the central coast. Uh, yes, make sure you leave everything well above the high tide line. Okay. Um, BJ is wondering if you don't put water in between the bulkhead and your feet, is there something else that you could put there instead? Sure. Uh, some people keep a, a big bag, like what are the, you know, I can't remember, like a duffel bag thing. Uh, some people put that there, and that can also work as uh, a paddle float. Uh, I've never done that, but I know Debbie has one. I know a few people that have them and like them. And then you have uh, you have them right there if you want to put your lunch in there, so you don't have to sort of unpack your boat at lunchtime. Um, yeah, anything that you're not worried about getting wet, because waterproof is just a loose term I have discovered. Uh, <laughs> If there's a way for the water to sneak in there, it will. Okay. Um, BJ's wondering if you ever in big seas have trouble with things um, moving around and, and uh, changing how your weight is distributed in your boat. No, never have. Okay. Um, Jenny's wondering why you put electronics in your cockpit rather than in a hatch. Um, either or, I could do, it's a Pelican case. I think they're pretty reliable. Um, the electronics that I keep in my, in my Pelican case are backup batteries. Uh, so if my, uh, radio died and I wanted backup batteries, and if I'm on the water and it's a long, long paddle, I want them handy. So, I mean, you can, most of the time you can find somewhere to go on shore and replace your batteries, but, um, yeah, I like things. I like to know where they are and that they're handy if I'm possibly going to need them. Great. Um, Edmund has attached your packing lists to the chat so you could click on them to download them, anybody who wants to do that. Uh, Sean's wondering what you're using as your bailout bag. It's uh, just a, a, a Sea to Summit waterproof bag. Everything in it is in a Ziploc bag if it's if it's going to get wet. I, I believe in doubling up on things just to to make sure. Okay, uh, and and Dave asked, but you've already answered this that you do tether your water bags in. Yeah. Um, or at least sometimes I'll leave one loose, like the one at the feet is really hard to tether. I don't think it's going anywhere. Uh, the rest of them are definitely tethered. I just want to make sure I've got water. If, if things go sideways. Okay. Um, Barry is wondering what kind of a laser flare you have. Uh, I don't know. Um, I found it online. I can't remember what kind it is. Uh, I'll look it up and I'll let you know, Barry. And when I forget, email me and then I'll let you know. <laughs> okay. And uh, Jenny's watch, wondering if you have sat in your telco cockpit 
cockpit with that bailout bag attached to your PFD? Uh, just before I did the video. Ah, great. Okay. And uh, Jenny says Trotac has the laser flares. Great. Okay. Mm. Always best to shop local. <laughs> And Alan says red laser battery power. I don't know what that means, but maybe you guys do. Just that that's what they are. Oh, okay. Okay. They have a pretty reliable long life battery. And I don't know if people know how to use them. If you're in the water, you need help, you sort of angle it in front of uh, your rescue. Helicopter, <laughs> heaven for uh, Okay, and Sean has posted to the chat a link to Cabela's. Uh, if anybody's interested in that uh, bare, bare barrel. Nice, they have, they have soft-sided ones too, but they're, they're just about as expensive and they don't look as um, easy. To me. Okay, well, thank you so much, Lynn. That was fabulous. Yeah. And thank you to Morley for doing the videoing. That was it was wonderful. And if uh, you come up with a question later, just send me an email. Okay, Debbie is uh, raising her hand. Lynn, do you have your new deck pod? I do. Up? Uh, do I have it to show? I can go get it from my garage if you want to wait a second. No, that's okay. That's okay. No, I did get one though. Um, and I'll probably be using it. It's a, it's a gear lab thing and you, you put, um, you can attach your float and your pump and uh, essentials uh, onto it and then just leave it on deck so everything's handy and you pick up and go. More gadgets. I need new gear every year. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm not seeing any other questions, but lots of thanks coming in. So uh, once again, thanks, Lynn. Most welcome. I don't consider myself an expert at this at all, but uh, I, I do muddle on. And if you have any questions and if I can help in any way, I'm happy to. Great. Thanks, Edmund. Thank you, Edmund. Hey. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks, Lynn. Super. Okay. Nighty night. See you, cyclists, tomorrow. <laughs> right on. Bye. Bye. Bye.